Carl, thank you for joining us today and taking the time to tell us what you're up to with Versus. What was the most exciting thing that happened in the last couple of weeks? What was most engaging was the was the interesting reception of Axiom um, and the implications it has for you know what are the important problems to tackle, who's listening, does it resonate what, with what we think are the most important problems. So um, you know there are lots of things I could talk about, but one thing that sticks in my mind is um, the law data response of uh, Francois Cholet, who is quite a, a thought leader in this space, um, just for you know our listeners, and um, he is the person who's brought the ARC challenge to the table. This is a challenge to the entire machine learning, artificial intelligence community, which says, look, the kind of intelligence that we want is not what you are, you have been focusing on with large language models and the like. We want to move to what some people call a system two kind of intelligence thinking. So this dates back to Kahneman, uh, distinguishing between sort of reflexive, quick, automatic system one type thinking, and then the slower, more deliberative, more cognitive, intentional kind of thinking, which he calls system two, which is much more characteristic of, of what we're doing now. And this is a kind of natural intelligence that ultimately, you know, the versus team really are aspiring and working towards. So to get some um, really positive feedback, even from the very elemental functionality of uh, Axiom, was quite pleasing. And indeed, we've engaged uh, subsequently in conversations about the, the next set of benchmarks predicated on the system two kind of approach to natural intelligence. And that was, you know, a revealing exercise when talking to somebody you know, out there who's been thinking about these issues from a very different perspective for, for decades, I would imagine. Um, so that was, that was interesting. Uh, you know, under the hood, there have been other, um, you know, sort of technical exciting developments. Um, they're all, they're all future pointing but specifically to this kind of natural intelligence. Can you speak with us about what you're currently focused on with the Versus team? The current um, focus, which I think is beautifully exemplified by the achievements with Axiom, is on the distinction between being able to grow models from the bottom up versus having uh, starting off with a very expressive, very large model, say like a large language model, and then pruning them in the right kind of way to get to where you want to be, which is something that is as efficient as possible, both in terms of what it does, but also in terms of the cost, both financial and in, in electricity, uh, it, that, it, that, that um, would be entailed by running these machines. So the top-down approach has been... Um, fairly well documented, understood, and deployed both by us and, and, and many, many other people over the past decades. The bottom-up approach is, is still outstanding and still quite a bit of a conceptual challenge and comes under um, the rubric of things like structure learning, program induction. Th these are words or phrases or concepts that um, you could apply to bringing up your children. How on earth do they build good world models of their little world, their social world, their embodied world? These are really profound questions in terms of, you know, what principles can we apply to emulate the remarkable capacity of a baby to learn about its world, build its world models in a way that it becomes an athlete or an academic or an actor. Uh, you know, the, so drilling down on these principles is very important. That's our current focus. And there are a number of different alternatives that we are uh, appealing to. There are certain constraints that we have to explore, both theoretically and then um, via numerical simulations, numerical studies, and ultimately um, in an embodied context in little artifacts, little robots, for example. Taking a step back, what is it that lights you up most about this progress? Well, I mean, taking a step right back, um, it's just an expression of what drives us all, which is curiosity. Um, and curiosity, effectively, about ourselves as the most complicated and um, um, challenging systems in the universe. To understand ourselves is probably more important than understanding anything else. 
to understand ourselves we are, we have to understand the importance of us as curious creatures and that brings us back to the most beautiful example of curious creatures which is a young child born an infant born into the world how does its curiosity the principles that underwrite its epistemic foraging its actions that solicit the right kind of information that allows it to learn as efficiently as possible to live and enjoy a particular world whether that world is um, early life with the family or the sort of canonical example that sates curiosity which is education it's schools just think about what you did for the first you know decade of your life it was just indulging your curiosity so to be able to sort of understand the mechanics and the mathematics of this and to install that understanding in an artifact is you know um first of all um <clears throat> an extremely laudable endeavor in terms of moving from artificial intelligence to natural intelligence in artifacts um but also it promotes a formal self understanding we've come to understand how we came to be the way that we the why do we act as we do act and what happens to that curiosity when we get to uh, grumpy old men like me i saw a picture of you at the beach in your black suit with our r&d team when they were getting in and out of the water and it made me wonder is it that you really like the look or is it just trying to minimize decision fatigue that's interesting it may be decision fatigue um one one perspective on um being curious is that you're always trying to minimize surprise um and you know perhaps one could read decision fatigue as you're actively avoiding any surprises in terms of having to choose between this and that so i suspect it is that i am that kind of person i love routine i love uh, you know i am get very um prone when my routine is disrupted um and uh the way i dress complies exactly with that um so the honest answer to your question is that i um now almost universally work from home online i i, I work 7 days a week usually 10 to 12 hours a day but it's all online in the comfort of this room or my conservatory where i'm allowed to smoke my pipe um which means that i only have to go out once you know once a month if that and i have my going out clothes which is my black suit and everybody recognizes me in my black suit and the house done for decades so i i i'm glad you brought up that little photograph because it was a, a, a lovely occasion we we went to um a retreat on uh on what some people call the sort of english riviera in in, in brighton uh academically with the machine learning group and uh it was actually on the beach a glorious day very unt- untypical for the uk uh and have this photo opportunity with my usual suit on which was very reminiscent of previous times where this kind of thing has happened so the last time it happened um we were at a brain imaging conference in florida and uh I, again in my black suit i was out there on south beach incidentally while they were filming the film remake of Miami Vice so this glorious this picture of his what south beach perfect weather with helicopters flying around with me and my mates all men in black with our black suits on from england dressed properly uh, i could tell you other stories about glaciers and the like but it has become something which i find um which amuses me it's become a signature you know the black suit out there in these exotic places but you're still you in these exotic exotic places well it's a great look men in black indeed thank you carl it's always a pleasure i look forward to the next time okay bye for now <laughs>